How's it going, guys? It is 12.41 a.m., December 12th, Monday, here in Japan, and we have a medium difficulty question for immunology for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So we've got a 16-year-old boy uh, brought into emergency after an MVA. He has a fracture of his left femur. Close reduction is performed. He also has intractable nose bleeding that has managed successfully with nasal packing 24 hours after admission. Vitals are... He's febrile at 102 Fahrenheit, heart rate 100, respiratory rate 18, blood pressure 80 on 60. Binding of which the following receptor or receptors is most likely responsible for this patient's vitals. So let's just uh, whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, CD20, wrong fucking answer. This is on B cells, okay? And it's a high yield receptor slash ligand. Uh, you need to know rituximab is an agent that can be used uh, to treat some lymphomas, okay? E.g. Hodgkin and it targets CD20 on B cells. And one of the ways they ask this on the NVMe exams is they say, right, tuximab is given to a patient, and they say uh, he's most likely to develop which of the following, and the answer is bacterial pneumonia, because if you know CD20 is on B cells, and that B cells mature into plasma B cells, which secrete immunoglobulins, immunoglobulins necessary for humoral immunity, okay, uh, largely bacterial infections, uh, that you'd have increased susceptibility to bacterial pneumonias in someone who is on rituximab. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, lipopolysaccharide, wrong answer. This re just refers to endotoxin on gram negatives. Okay, so uh, the lipopolysaccharide, uh, LPS, has a lipid A component that in endotoxic shock, the lipid A of LPS is going to bind CD14 on macrophages. CD14 is also known as toll-like receptor, okay? Which toll-like receptor, also wrong fucking answer in this case. But this is important, what I'm telling you right now. So in endotoxic shock, gram negatives, you've got lipid A of LPS binds CD14, aka toll-like receptors on macrophages. And the macrophage in turn is going to release cytokines, okay? So TNF-alpha, IL-1 are the two highest yield ones for septic shock. TNF-alpha causes vascular permeability uh, and low blood pressure. IL-1 causes fever, okay? Exceedingly high yield all over the NBME exams. This is not endotoxic shock. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, MHC1, wrong answer. So, I mean, this is just present on nucleated cells and will uh, express intracellular live antigen, uh, i.e. viral particles, uh, to CD8 plus T cells, okay, for cell-mediated immunity. You could also be aware that a drug called bortezomib, bortezomib, which could be used for multiple myeloma as a protease inhibitor, and it shows up twice in the NVMe exams. Bortezomib will result in decreased MHC1 expression, okay, and in turn decreased CD8 plus uh, activation, CD8 plus T cell activation as a result of decreasing MHC1 expression. Uh, in addition, you should know that cells that are viral infected or sometimes uh, tumor cells, so tumorigenic cells, they can have down-regulated MHC1, and that is going to increase NK cell activation, natural killer cell activation, which in turn the NK cells will lyse uh, the viral or tumorigenic cells, okay? So they love that on NBME exams as well. Decreased MHC1 expression means increased NK cell activation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, MHC2, T cell receptor is correct answer. So this is toxic shock syndrome. All right, now in toxic shock syndrome, you can get this from tampons, okay, it's cotton, or nasal packing, such as when you have nosebleeds. This is a high yield etiology for toxic shock syndrome. Now, Staph aureus that produces TSST toxin, it's not an endotoxin, it's what's called a super antigen, and it bridges MHC2 on the macrophage with T cell receptor on the CD4 plus T cell. And that's that in turn, that bridging of these two receptors is going to cause the macrophage to similarly to endotoxic shock release cytokines, okay, namely TNF alpha, 
vascular permeability, low blood pressure, and IL-1, which is fever, okay? So that distinction, when we have toxic shock syndrome, super antigen, MHC2 T-cell receptor, versus endotoxic shock, where you have the lipid A of LPS binding CD14, aka toll-like receptor on macrophages, they like that immunologic distinction for step one. Now, another layer of value I can add here is that this super antigen binding of MHC2 to T cell receptor is not limited to TSST toxin for toxic shock syndrome. This can also be seen with strep pyogenes. Okay, so for example, they and it's caused by exotoxin A. They will tell you a uh, patient has a cellulitis, erysipelas, uh, not really in Patigo, but there's a question on the NBME. They say patient has a, a cellulitis and they have a, uh, a shock presentation, and they tell you that blood cultures grow uh, gram-positive cocci in chains, not clusters, and they just wanted to know the organism, and the answer was strep pyogeny. Staph aureus wasn't listed, okay? And that's just similar. I mean, exotoxin A causes toxic shock-like syndrome, and similar to TSST toxin, exotoxin A of strep pyogenes can bridge MHC2 and T cell receptor, causing septic shock. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.